Welcome, fellow travelers. You are listening to the Infinite Rabbit Hole. This is Skeeter. Yes, that's Skeeter from episode 185, where you can listen to my UFO and ghost encounters. So make sure you tune in to that and also sit back, relax. Let's listen to Jeremy, Jake, and Jeff as they talk about whatever this episode is. Whether it be aliens, will it be cryptids, will it be space, or who knows? We'll find out as you sit back, relax, and enjoy another episode of The Infinite Rabbit Hole. So make sure you like and subscribe if you like the episodes that you're listening to. Also, leave a comment on your podcast app or swing by the webpage. Just leave a comment, you know, or... Leave a voice recording just like I am right now. Once again, you're listening to The Infinite Rabbit Hole. Welcome back to the Infinite Rabbit Hole Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy, and today we're going to celebrate Halloween. Look at us, looking all festive and stuff Mm. in our Sunday's best. We are coming live today from twitch.tv forward slash infinite rabbit hole for any of you listening in on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anything else you listen to podcasts on. You can come watch us live every Sunday at 8 o'clock Central Time. Before we jump into the topic for tonight. Let's go ahead and visit the guests and see what they're supposed to be. Hefe. What's up, bro? What are you? I am a scarecrow rabbit. <laughs> mm. Gary, look at you, man. Dude, that's dope. That is dope. Pretty sick, right? I bro, figured I'm... it was fitting, you know, infinite rabbit hole. We are, you know, honestly, we all know I'm that guy. I waited till today to get my my <laughs> costume, so... I went out to Walmart. They didn't have shit. Went to Target. They didn't have shit. Went to Spirit of Halloween. They had a lot of shit. So, <laughs> well, like, it's kind of their thing. That's their thing. So we walked around, and then I, I got this. And like I was saying earlier, I had full intentions to return this thing tomorrow. Sorry, you're going to see me messing with it. It's not very comfortable. Uh, but I was going to return it tomorrow, but they were like, nope, sorry, you can't. So here I have, now I have a mask. Nice. I love it, man. It, it looks good on you. It really it does. Talks- if you get it right, you see like the mouth moves when I talk, which is kind of sick, but it's crunching my my beard, and I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> well, everyone's got to make sacrifices, man. Just just shave it. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. We'll, Beardless we'll Jeff for Halloween. No, we're not doing that. All right, Jake. Whom, whom are you? Actually, I'll t- hold on. I will shave the beard right now on stream. For a five hundred dollar donation. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Donate huh? five hundred dollars, and Jeff shaves his beard. That would pay for another plane ticket for him to come out. That would. Well, that would pay for a couple of them. It'd Crystal said therapy. no beard shaving. It would pay for my therapy. <laughs> Jake, who are you, man? What you doing today? Jeff, who do you think I am? I got a a pipe right here. You are dad. I guarantee it's from a fucking movie. Dad? A dad? Huh? So he said. Dad? Is that you? <laughs> dad? I came back. Turns out they only had milk in Oklahoma. <laughs> I had to walk there. Kay- Kenzar, who am I? It's from a popular movie, National Lampoon. Yeah, it's a Christmas I'm not, movie. I'm not going to get it. Kids, well, of course, you're not going to get it. Kenzar probably will get it. She probably I would. I don't watch movies. I'm Cousin Eddie from Christmas Vacation. Shaders oh. full. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, cousin, cousin Eddie. Yeah, That's right. Yep. You don't know. Shut up. You look just like him. Let me tell just, you, just like him. <laughs> Whitney says y'all suck. I put a lot of time and money into this costume. Well, you look good. You look comfortable. This is pretty comfortable. You want to get up and do a spin for us? Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> 
Here. I don't see. It comes with the belt <laughs> and the thing. Ooh. And the hat. And Pants, huh? Nice. Because it's kind of chilly in here. Classy. Well, I'm a man in black. I didn't yeah, go I far with this one. Just like, just like last time. I did the bunny I man. You were doing bunny like man the Blues Bridge. Brothers or something. No, man, it's Men in Black. It's the man, man in Black. I had the Neuralizer, but I can't find it. I think my kids fucking took looks, it. Looks like Blues. I was saying Blues. You know what, man? You know what? You don't even look like a fucking bunny. Well, you know what, dude? Crystal says <laughs> that you look like one of the Blues Brothers. I agree, Crystal. Whatever. Terrible costume. And I'm a Blues Brother. I don't care. I'm yeah. supposed to look. Do Blues Brothers have this? No, Men in Black do. I didn't even see that until you pulled it out. Yeah. Yeah, see? That's how far I went with this. Dang. I got that thing for a dollar fifty. Nice. Yeah. It it's like the cherry on top, man. It's perfect. Actually they do. They're <laughs> musicians. That's true. Music musicians do wear those little microphone things. Crystal, you're not funny. Stop it. <laughs> oh yeah, look at them. Look at all those men in black. Look at them all. They're all in black and stuff. That's literally you. Nah. <laughs> You're I a, a uh I got a beard. They don't have beards. Man in blues. You never seen that, right? No. Right. Yeah. Not ever. Right. I I might watch it. All right. Uh before we get started, after we did our introductions, I want to say he hello and thank you to Kenzar for being our very first Patreon supporter. Oh wow. Yay. Thank you. Yay. Yay. Give her the shout out. Shout uh out. go ahead and make that announcement. We now have a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash infinite rabbit hole. Yeah, we, we got it. I am working on the very first uh, Patreon exclusive episode. Mm. And for those that are interested in what it might be, it is an additional part to our Skinwalker Ranch series. So I came across some really good content and uh, I will present it for patreon the question is and this is going to have to be answered by people when this episode comes out which will be the tuesday before halloween do you want it done like this episode here where we read discuss or do you want it to be a solo documentary episode and if it's a solo documentary episode i'll probably just uh rewrite the whole skinwalker ranch episode and just redo it uh, with the new information added in there, make it nice and fresh with, with clean music behind it, and hmm. and my my succulent voice telling succulent, you, whispering that's what I think. to you in my moist ear holes. I'm a funny guy, I am a funny guy. You are, you are. I am. Yeah, I've been told that before, and I was like, yes, and I'm humble about it too. Oh, good, good. Uh, mm -hmm. One other announcement: we have uploaded all of our infinite rabbit hole episodes to youtube you can now listen to us on youtube podcasts we are now there and you can leave comments on every episode there we've got a bunch of comments you guys want to hear some yeah yeah let's, let's see the first one is by valerie ensign uh on the tim banal episode she said, why are you starting on episode 167? <laughs> Anyways, good job. <laughs> Thanks, Valerie. Appreciate that. Um, this is on a short. We've, we've been posting shorts on, on YouTube lately. Uh, on one of the Men in Black shorts, Musclebird9761 says, I love you, Jake. Mm. Yeah. And I said, aw, back. Yeah. And we don't know who that is. Nope. <laughs> Um, J Dogs Full uh, commented on our Flat Earth conversation that we had with Declassified Dave. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, "Contact Flat Earth Dave and get him to come on and educate you. He likes small sh shows as long as they are Globers. We're a small show. Well, I'm a Glober. I've actually had out. I've had Flat Earth Dave on my show twice. Have you? Yeah, man. Well, why don't you reach out to Flat Earth Dave for us then?" Why don't you reach out to Flat Earth, Dave? Listen, guy. Listen. We're trying to network. Yeah. Yeah. So network. Yeah, through you. Just a little parasite class. Yeah, you guys <sighs> yeah. another 
Whatever, Some man. More shills, just parasitics, just sucking the. F- okay, I'll hit him up. I'll let him know. Thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate that. I got you. Um, we have a comment on the Younger Dryas episode. This one's from Doctor Suri Anna Ray Nine Two Five Six. Perfect. Uh, he says we must take a Geiger counter to measure radioactivity the next time we see vitrification on megaliths we might find proof of pre-diluvian nuclear war thanks doc i appreciate Hmm. that i'm with you there could be something there good stuff um and then we have a plethora of comments from somebody on the patterson gimlin film episode episode 15 Hmm. episode 15 you guys ready for this? this is these are kind of funny ready um there's a lot of typos uh, let's see. One of you said, turns out they weren't able to make a suit this good until 40 years later. You're wrong. Uh, unless you mean CGI, what movie are you talking about? That's as good as what is in the PG film. Another one, one echo chamber that needs to be cleared up is why Patterson had illustrations in his quote unquote book that had drawings of a creature with boobs before this footage was taken. I didn't know anything about that. That was also before I really did deep research. So thanks, Steve. Then Steve then followed up with raising that lane conspiracy, which is a thousand percent pure conjecture is unnecessary and ruins the credibility of this episode. It's a peeve of his happy birthday, Bob Gimlin and happy anniversary to the PG film. I'm out. That is also another thing that, that, that we need to announce that today is Patty day. Today is the day that Patty was uh was captured oh. on film, October twentieth. Nice. Yeah. So what, happy... what was he saying? Oh, the last comment. I don't know. It's been so long. Um, something about a conspiracy that we brought up, and he was like, "It's lame and it's stupid." Wow. All right. I so mean, he's got... huh? Well, I would say to him, without sounding too rude. No, go ahead. Um, I I don't have enough time to filter out everything that's a pet peeve of individuals so um deal with it i suppose Ooh, you hear that steve god i'm just saying it's like okay and then people in so many people being at walmart at the same time is a pet peeve for me but i'm not gonna tell them i'll go home (laughs) maybe you (laughs) should nor would they listen to me maybe they will you should do it maybe they will i'll be like look can you guys just go home all right just I'm tired of looking at you. This is a Please. pet peeve of mine. Please, dude. Uh, last it, comment. It's just your we preference. Have. No one cares about your preference. Last comment. <laughs> uh, lat take. There's no other evidence of Bigfoot. Other videos are trash, hearsay, and footprints don't count. The only thing you can conclude is that this is not a man in a suit. So the only thing I really had to say is, yes, we made the argument that it's not a man in a suit, right? Mm-hmm. What else could it be? What else could it fucking be? Is it a, a bear in a fucking suit? suit? Yeah. I mean, start off with the word lactate. Is that what you said? No, man. He he did, He's got a lot of typos. He, lat take. So L A A T space take. You know what? I don't, people, I don't know what he, people terrible spelling is a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> so lactating is a pet peeve of mine. Yes, also lactating. I hate it when people lactate in our comments. <laughs> That's a pet peeve at Walmart. At Walmart. I'm not going to say that I don't like That's it's weird. a thing. It's a thing, man. It's good, dude. All right, you guys ready to roll? Yeah. You guys got <laughs> anything to put out before we start? Uh, nope. I've got nipples, Jeremy. Can you milk me? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have you seen that movie? No, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. That's a pet peeve of mine. It's what, perfect. that you don't know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that you don't oh, know what we're talking about. That's a pet peeve. Oh. That's all right. We'll laugh together, Jake. Crystal's yeah. laughing too. <laughs> Crystal's not laughing. Look at her. She's not laughing at all. Uh, get this all set up here. It's validated. She put it in the chat. She is laughing. Good. And she's a real person. Is she? Yeah. Since when? I mean, I I saw her. She. It could be AI. It could be. All right. There is green screen technology, and you know. Well, today we are going over reports and counters of the Men in Black. You guys ready? Yep. Yep. All right. First one takes us to Los Angeles, California in 1953. 
In both of Nick Redfern's books, The Real Men in Black and The Slender Man Mysteries, Redfern makes mention of a specific MIB encounter from Los Angeles, California in 1953 when an attorney's office in the city was visited by two extremely tall men in black suits, described as, as at least six foot, six and a half feet tall each, who demanded to be included in the investigations of the recent issue of missing children in the area. This demand was seemingly granted as the two men were given authoritative positions in the building. The office never questioned their presence until after their investigation was over. But once they were gone, the entire place broke down in a frenzy. The workers at the office described the hands of the men as being the most disturbing feature with fingers that looked more like independently moving tentacles than typical fingers and filing cabinets that were left dented in on uh, the top by what people were describing as one of the tall men who leaned against them. Later reports of these men in black would also report descriptions of tentacles in many different aspects. How do we want to do this? You want me to just read a few of them and we'll we'll stop to talk about them? Yeah, we'll do that. Good, yeah, good answer. That. Thanks. Yes. Thanks, Jeff. Fuck. Parkersburg, West Virginia, November 2nd, 1966. John Keel mentions an encounter reported to Mary Heyer that included an unnamed man and his co-worker who were driving home from work after dark when a craft came out of the sky and landed in the highway between them. A strange man dressed in all black walked out and towards the two men. He spotted a large grin and had his hands tucked under his armpits. The man asked the duo what they were doing and a few other questions such as where they lived and who they were who they were before walking back to the craft and lifting back into the sky. Then a few months later, the son of the man who reported the incident to hire called her office and asked her to not ever print anything about what his father had told her. When she asked why, he stated, quote, look, don't use my name. I don't want to get involved in this thing. That scientist fella told me before being cut off by hire asking about who is this scientist that you're talking about. The man explained that a scientist from Ohio had stopped by their house and told them not to spread anything about what they saw that night. The really strange thing about this visit was that the father, son, and father's co-worker had never told anyone about the incident at all due to the fear of being labeled as crazy. He just knew every detail about what happened that night. Keel would go on to explain that this would seem to be a report from a crackpot but that exact same thing happened on the exact same night on the exact same stretch of road another man had reported i just i i put it there again reported the same thing but this man would report the incident to the police that man's name was woody derenberg sound familiar yes it does good good job guys and we'll do one more here parkersburg west virginia again November 2nd, 1966, 7 p.m. Woodrow, a.k.a. Woody Derenberger of Mineral Wells, West Virginia, was driving home from a day's work as, as an appliance salesman when two vehicles drove past him in haste while on the highway near Parkersburg at, at about 7 p.m. The second car was very large and had no external lights on when it overtook Woody's position, but something else was off. This thing he originally thought to be a large truck was not touching the ground at all. Instead, it was flying low to the ground and looked as if it were pursuing the first view. As the flying craft overtook Woody, it turned towards the side of the road and came to a complete hovering stop and lowered to the ground. The craft was larger than your typical vehicle and was shaped like a kerosene lamp with a large bulging section in the middle that tapered off on each end. As the craft lowered down to the road, Woody had to slam on his brakes and safely stopped his vehicle about 8 to 10 feet away from whatever it was that lay in front of him. Woody sat in awe as he watched a door appear from seemingly nowhere and observed a man walk out and towards the driver's side of Woody's vehicle. Woody would later describe the man as being about 5 feet and 10 inches tall. He had slicked back black hair and olive complexion, wore a dark overcoat with what Woody believed to be a shiny green piece of clothing underneath. Woody watched as the man walked up casually with his hands tucked under his armpits as if he were hiding them before Woody received a strange signal in his mind 
that sounded like spoken words. He soon realized that it was the man who was walking up who was mind-speaking to him. The words that rang through his mind without the stranger ever moving his lips said, quote, Do not be afraid. We mean you no harm. I come from a country far less powerful than yours. Woody and the stranger had a short conversation about some basic topics without Woody ever lowering his window. As the craft closed up and lifted back into the, into the air, some of the questions that Woody remembers were asked about the city of Parkersburg, Woody's job, and where Woody lived. As the men were finishing up with their telepathic conversation, the craft lowered back down to the road, and the unfamiliar man told Woody that he would see him again, and that his name was Cold. Cold finished the encounter by mentioning that Woody should report this conversation, and that Cold would see him again soon. That night, when Woody returned home, his wife highly concerned and his wife was highly concerned and begged Woody to contact the police about what had happened. Eventually, he would give in, which sparked a long story between Woody, the public, and an alien humanoid from a faraway planet called Lanulos, named Injured Cold. If you would like to hear us do a deep dive into the amazing story, I recommend checking out our four-part series that we did in episode seventy-three through seventy-six with special guests. Ashers from the On Wednesdays We Talk Weird podcast, as well as episode 93 with special guest Tanya Derenberger, the daughter of Woody, in episode 159, our remastered documentary episode of the Injured Cold story, where the complete story is presented without any conversation or side topics at all. So I can't do a Men in Black episode with talking, without talking about the one most famous Man in Black that, that was never actually a Man in Black, and that was Injured Cold. Will Smith. Will Smith. Sure. I don't get it. Tommy Lee Jones. No, Tommy Lee Jones was the real one, bro. Yeah. Um, I, something just occurred to me that I just kind of had to kind of throw out there. Yeah. Why are people contemplating or actually calling the police to report something strange when no crime is being committed or anything like that? Like, I wouldn't call the police and be like, oh. I just saw a weird looking car on the road. Is that something that used to happen back in the day and then people just don't do that anymore? Because it's just like, you know, it's oh. not an emergency. I didn't see anything illegal. No one's being hurt. It's just like, I'm not going to call them up and be like, I saw a light in the sky and be like, okay, cool. Well, people used to get arrested for having weird cars. So, oh, yeah. 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 So it's like, that's, I was kind of thinking about that. I was like, I was like, why would you do that? Wait, what are you asking exactly? Do they? Why are people either talking about it, contemplating it, or actually calling the police because they see something strange that's not something like it's not an emergency? Because you got Karens out there, bro. You got Kens and Karens, man. You know, you see somebody parked in a parking lot that's not supposed to be there, they're calling the cops. You see some kid walking around with a hoodie on, calling the cops. You look at him wrong, calling the cops. It's just like, you know. That's true. That's true. Maybe Woody Baron, Woody Derenberger is just a Karen. He just yeah. has a conversation with a guy in a weird looking vehicle, and he's like, "I'm going to talk to the police about well, this." What town was this in again? Where was this at again? Seven p.m. West Virginia. Oh, you weren't. You were a part of the the injured cold series, weren't you? Yeah, but bro, I got a bad memory. I can't remember specific. It's been it's been a while on everything. Yeah. Uh, but it's bumfuck nowhere, right? It was in the middle of nowhere. It was like yes. Yes. Yeah, so come on, man. He, you know, he knows his neighbors. He, you know, he sees a weird fella out there in the sticks. You know, you know, he's calling old buddy Frank, Sheriff Frank. Hey, we got to let you know what's going on here, man. Just hey, there's weird. a guy out here with a suit on. Yeah, what's that all about? <laughs> Came out of the sky. Yeah. Looks like he might be the lawyer type. Yeah. He has his hands in his armpits. He's buying yeah, up better. all our land. Like a shot at him. All right. Blue big kiss. ag. He's one of the big ag guys in here. Who's this? Crystal oh, says people do that when they're suspicious or scared about stuff. Well, people may do that, but that's a pet peeve of mine. I wouldn't do that. Oh, man. I'd be like, um, hmm, interesting lad. One thing I'm to keep gonna... in mind, though, about that time period, that was the same, uh, the same period where the Mothman was wreaking havoc through Point Pleasant. Also the same time period where the Silver Bridge went down. Uh, also the same time period where a ton of people showed up in the small town of Point Pleasant that looked like uh, uh, really strange, weird, uh, short people. 
they but there was a ton of them and they all happened to work for the hydroelectric company it's basically uh, it's like after 9 11 and everyone profiling the crap out of anyone that has brown skin exactly yep i had a buddy that he was mexican had a really big beard and every single time he flew long hair long beard he would get extra security inspections and checks and things like that and he's like i'm i'm not muslim <laughs> it's <laughs> like up, dude. <laughs> and they're just like well it's just you know a random check and he's like every time every time i fly every other month yeah shit i would wear a turban yeah just uh anything else you guys ready yeah oh wait I, real quick how many how many like actual uh men in black sightings are there do you know thousands okay there's a shitload then yeah i mean i only did six pages worth right well you know i didn't know because sometimes it's like a dozen right or like a couple yeah. dozen but if you're talking hundreds thousand you know there's a ton man it's a lot it's a hey, lot Skeeter's lot. in the chat hey skeeter. skeeter skeet skeet all right Wildwood, like you. Wildwood, New Jersey, January 9th, 1967. Connie, the 17 year old daughter of Arlene and Edward Christensen, answered the door the night her and her family returned from a long trip to Florida. The man who stood there was tall, wore a Russian style fur hat and a long black coat. Connie walked out for her mother. Connie called out for her mother, and Arlene would ask the man, what it was that he had come to their house for. The man replied with a question, quote, Does Edward Christensen live here? Mr. Christensen may have inherited a great deal of money. May I come in? Arlene allowed the man to enter their home as she called up the stairs for Edward. Edward was six foot two inches tall, and the stranger was easily six inches or more taller than him. The Christensons would later state that their best guess at his weight was at least 300 pounds. The tall man removed his hat and stated, quote, This will only take 40 minutes. His hair was black and close cropped with a balding spot that looked as if someone had just shaved it on the back of his head, and one of the man's eyes was not coordinating with the other, one which made them assume he had a glass eye. As the man took off his coat, Connie spotted a bronze badge pinned to his shirt and the letters K, or possibly the Greek letter Sigma, and a lowercase X on the front. The man quickly covered it up, removed it, and put it into his pocket. As the man sat down, his already too short black pants rode up his shin, exposing his dark socks and dark, thick-soled shoes. But the strangest thing about this was the green wire that was coming from his foot and up his pant leg. The man spoke in a sort of robotic rhythm and seemed to be talking as if he was speaking from a script he had remembered. Together, his speech reminded the family of a radio recording, but live. Edward explained to the man that they were just getting ready to sit down for dinner and asked him if he would like to stay and eat. The man, who would eventually introduce himself as Tiny, replied in a raspy, asthmatic voice that he was on a diet and he would like a glass of water in about 10 minutes. Tiny would begin by taking out a small notebook and pen and began asking Ed a few identifying questions, such as history of schools, scars, and past addresses. After 10 minutes of his face getting progressively redder, he turned to Connie and asked for the glass of water he had mentioned. When she returned, Tiny used the water to swallow a, a large yellow tablet that he produced from his pocket, which seemed to calm whatever it was that was making his face look so red. Forty minutes later, Tiny was done with his interview and thanked the family for their time. He exited the house, walked down the road, and lifted his arm into the air. They quickly learned that this was a signal as a black 1963 Cadillac pulled up to the curb with its headlights out before Tiny got in and they drove off away, still with no headlights. This encounter with a strange man becomes an instant possible men in black event once you know that the Christensen's had a prominent UFO sighting in November the previous year. Southside, West Virginia, April 
1967. An unnamed man from Ohio was driving along the chief cornstalk hunting grounds on a rainy night when a black figure sailed above his car and began to dive to give chase as he tried to accelerate away. Quote, it was at least 10 feet wide. It was doing over 70. It scared the hell out of me. When I saw it move ahead of me and turn towards the river. In October, about seven months later, he was getting home from work when he walked in on a strange man dressed in all black standing in his living room. As he reached for his light switch, the, the strange intruder took a picture of the homeowner with a blinding flash. While he was rubbing his eyes, trying to gain his vision back, the home invader raced past him and got away. Uh, Gallipolis, 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 Ohio, December 1967. One of the most discussed encounters with the infamous men in black around Point Pleasant that year was when two short men dressed all in black entered into the office of Gallipolis, Ohio branch of the Athens, Ohio Messenger, a local newspaper building just across from the Silver Bridge and confronted the very same Mrs. Mary Heyer, a reporter for the newspaper. The men who Heyer described as being possibly twins had stated, quote, we hear there's been a lot of flying saucer activity around here. This came as a shock to Heyer as literally a few days prior, the Silver Bridge, which stood just yards away from our office window, had collapsed into the Ohio River, killing 46 people three days before Christmas. It is easy to understand her confusion when an event like this happened and someone come walking into the building of the local newspaper asking about UFOs during this particular time. Things continued to get even stranger when the men began asking if Hire had been told by anyone to, quote, what would you do if someone did order you to stop reporting on flying saucer sightings? Which Hire promptly replied, quote, I tell them to go to hell. And the men promptly left, and the man promptly left. Then the eeriness of the situation took another step up when later that same afternoon, another man entered the doors of the messenger who was also dressed in all black. But unlike the other two who were, who were tidy and well-groomed, this man seemed disheveled with a ragged suit and untamed hair. One particular detail about the man that Hire found disturbing was the extreme length of his tapering fingers. The man introduced himself, quote, my name is Jack Brown. I'm a UFO researcher. Immediately following his introduction, Mr. Brown asked in a stuttering voice, quote, what, what would, what would you do if someone ordered you to stop, to stop printing UFO stories? This didn't sit well with Hire as she asked the man if there was any connection with the two men who had paid her a visit earlier in the day. Mr. Brown's response was that he was a friend of Gray Barker's. Gray Barker was from Clarksburg, West Virginia, a little over 100 miles away. Soon after a few back-to-backs with Gray, John Keel, and the local UFO sightings, the man promptly left, and Mary Heyer was left with a very strange feeling about the three men in black that paid her a visit that day. All right, let's talk about them. People are way too trusting, man. Yeah. Like I would I wouldn't even allow like and I don't do anything, but I wouldn't allow a police officer to like just walk in my house or anything like that. Like oh, let yeah. alone <clears throat> someone unannounced being like, Does someone live here at this address? Because some vague response, Oh yeah, come on in. Like it's just like <laughs> it's like anyone can you could go on the Onyx hunt map. And look at my neighborhood and see who owns every single house. Like that is not a valid reason to just let someone walk on in. <laughs> yeah. And it was like people, I guess back in the day, were way more trusting. And you could even do the whole, well, small town living, blah, blah, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, well, that may be true. But if I don't know you, you're obviously not one of my neighbors. You're not just going to walk up in my house. Like, you know what? So you can case it out and break in later. Like, no, yeah, that's a, that's a good way to get domered. Yeah, for sure. It's just like, this is, this is strange. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously they, they told, you know, threatened somebody, but I'm interested in that description and talking about this guy had some wires coming out of his shoes up his leg. Like, what was that whole, all that about dude? robotic voice? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a, uh, that's pretty strange. So the robotic voice is a pretty common, uh, uh, detail in a lot of men in black 
mm-hmm. uh, sightings and encounters. We talked about that a little bit during uh, one of the one of the two presentations. Right. Um, uh, the 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 odd voice doesn't only come in a robotic sound though either. It can also come in a whisper, a squeal, um, a very very deep, very very low, or very high, very low tone voices. Um, a lot of things. I mean. Uh, Sometimes it sounds like these people have never spoken a word before in their lives. It's it's strange, right? It's it, the, the the details of a lot of these encounters leave you believing that these things probably are not human beings. Peter said in the chat that they're definitely not demons. Well, if they're not human beings, mm. maybe they're demons. They're demons. Let me ask you this. Just because I know I know party is kind of being facetious, right? But would you, if like aliens from another planet actually came, would you think they're demons? Sure, why not? Would you? You wouldn't be open to like the possibility that other civilizations on other planets could be created by the same god as well? Oh yeah, sure. You know, save just the same, or in another fashion, perhaps maybe. If need yeah, be. yeah, I mean, I suppose I mean, like that's a it, it's all a possibility, but you saw the Pope said that recently, right? Well, like, the Pope yeah, said a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah the Pope obviously, right? The Pope I, is trying to get all the world religions together under one banner. Like, I yeah, don't. I think the Pope. the Pope is a lizard, personally, but <laughs> I'm not know, a Catholic. I'm just, <laughs> yeah, saying, I'm just saying, you know, yeah. caused himself the Holy Father was just a blasphemous title for any human being to have like he doesn't sin right it's funny because his instagram keeps getting he gets getting caught because he keeps following like uh only fans girls on instagram so yeah there's that (laughs) that's our pope he control his instagram (laughs) someone's doing it i mean like realistically is the pope controlling his own instagram you think that knows man maybe he does maybe no bro come on maybe he does maybe he's like man 99% 99% of like celebrities or entertainers aren't controlling their own social media platforms for the most part, maybe one or two of them. They might, you know, like their ex account or something, but I do my you know, own. You're right. We are. Celebrity. <laughs> but the Pope, come on, bro. Crystal <laughs> says he's too old to understand it for one. Yeah, you're probably right. They, well, one know, of the bishops who's in control of his Instagram keeps following his only fan models and it doesn't, it's not a good look. Yeah, well, but also, kid said that the pipe also, is way I mean, too cool. He can he can say a whole bunch of stuff, right? It's just you know, it's weird, especially when he goes ag- against the Bible, which he's supposed to be like, you know, the head of the Catholic Church, representing like the inner mediator between God and all of all the Catholics following the bible and he says stuff that goes completely against scripture that's pretty strange <laughs> it wasn't makes a there, lot of people wonder but yeah wasn't there like a lot of talk back before he was the pope that like or, or like right when he became the pope that like oh he's gonna be the last pope like there was some prophetic yeah I, something like that and then also from like some monk from like 1200 years ago or something like that. I, I heard something like that, but also it was kind of strange because the last Pope retired, they're supposed to like die like, yeah. apparently. And then yep. the next one takes over. So that mm-hmm. was weird too. They're like, you know, did he just kind of get pushed out? You know, whatever it is, because right. if you're supposed to die being the Pope, then I, maybe, maybe he I did, don't know right? how they deal like... with other stuff like senility or, um, uh, getting Alzheimer's and dementia and stuff like that. Because you'd have to imagine if they're if they're all getting old enough to where they're having a natural death, then they're also dealing with things like that sometimes, right? So that yeah. might be a part of it. I don't know, but yeah. Well, something I always talk about, like when the, I remember when the queen died, like before they announced that she was dead, there was all this talk in the conspiracy world, like, oh, the queen's been dead. You know, the queen died, all this stuff. There's like all this like symbology and iconography. But people were also pointing out like, oh, but she was just here, like at this thing. And here's like some footage. But it's like you got body doubles and, you know, right. deep fakes and that kind of thing. So it's it makes you wonder, like, did that Pope retire or did he actually die? And they just kind of like covered that up and use the double for a little while until they can like manufacture this mass press release that hey he's retiring blah 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 blah. yeah well anyway to answer your question um (laughs) yes i i do think that's a possibility it's it's probably not a probability 
but it's a possibility. Um, that being said, just because, I mean, if they really wanted to, they could pull like an injured cold thing and just be like, yeah, this is, you know, show some people on national TV at the, like the white house or whatever it is, or one of the European union things or the UN or whatever. Right. And just be like, yeah, this is an alien from another planet, you know? So it would have to, I don't know how you would prove that unless they looked really weird but even then, it could have been pre-recorded and it could be green screened and all that sort of right. stuff. And they're doing, they're messing around with, you know, rap. Was it like, you call it a a rap concert, I suppose. But they have like a Tupac as a freaking hologram or whatever. So yeah. there's so much stuff. Like, how would you ever be able to <laughs> see that and just be like, oh yeah, this is real. Unless you saw them face to face, right? And even then, you could be getting a you know, the CIA could be implanting you with ideas and <laughs> you know, all this sort of stuff, whatever the thing that Jeff's always talking about. That's like, you know, speaking of Jeff, hi, bud. Sorry. I had to take the mask off for a minute. I think it was like restricting the blood flow in my brain. Well, it's got, you got a build mark on your head now. Yeah. I know you see that. Yeah. yeah. Both sides. But yeah. I don't know. What do you think, Jeff? Or would you, or would you say that they were still interdimensionals? Would you be willing to accept them as being outer space aliens? <clears throat> Wait, say that again. I'm sorry. Ask that again. Well, it's the same question. I'm just sending it to you versus, you know, whether they're real aliens or demons. Um, would you think that they are real aliens, or would you still be on board with their interdimensionals or um, inner Earth beings or whatever? I mean, I, I think any of the things are possible, right? But I, I, ne I wouldn't necessarily, even if something was like interdimensional, I wouldn't necessarily think that it's demonic. Right? No, no, no. I mean, I'm not saying demonic for you because you are. That's that's my kind of. Well, tag I believe. I, I understand, but I do believe in that kind of thing. Right? Oh, I do sure. believe in demons, right? Like we've had this conversation. I, right, I believe right. in these things, but I wouldn't necessarily think that just because something is interdimensional necessarily makes it evil or demonic, right? Or sure. whatever. There, there's got to be angelic forces as well, I believe. I do believe in, like, duality and that kind of thing. I guess it would so, have to depend on the message. The message, right. Or Well, that's the thing, too. Creamer always talks about on Shadowban, like, you know, that the, the guy, like, in Revelations, that, like, the, the Antichrist, like, everybody loves the guy, right? And it's like... The Not everyone. Thing. Not everyone, but like most of the world loves the guy. He's yeah. like the greatest guy ever, you know, and like everything is super dope for a while. Like, yeah. so, you know, the message itself might sound great too, but you never know, I guess. It's hard to say. Well, I would say that there would have to be a level of discernment. And, you know, yeah, I mean, someone comes around toting like the idea for world peace and all that stuff. I mean, let's, I'm not going to. I'm not the, yeah, wars all the time, everyone dying guy, right? I'm not saying that. But one of the things that the Antichrist is supposed to do is make a peace treaty between Israel and all the other nations, right? And then he, uh, he allows them to start worshiping again, which in order to, to worship the way that the Jews are supposed to worship, they have to have the temple, which is currently in conflict on wherever the, the last temple, the second temple's location was whether it's really in the spot where the Dome of the Rock is right now, which is, you know, the biggest Muslim mosque ever. They're not going to demolish the Dome of the Rock to freaking uh, to put up, you know, a, a Jewish temple. Um, but that would have to get built. The Jews are already ready to go. They have all of the, the, the priestly garbs and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, so anyway, there's things that the antichrist is going to do before he comes out and says, "You know what? I am God. You have to worship me, and if you don't worship me, I'm going to kill you." So, although I'm I would love to see 10 years or 7 years where we're where there's no wars, that would be great. Someone comes out and starts doing that sort of stuff because I have that discernment and I know what the guy is supposed to do, I can be like, "That's suspicious." Versus everyone else, which would just be like, sure. oh, yeah, this is great, you know, of course. So, 
it, that's it would have to be with the message it's like yeah a spiritual being whether it's angelic or demonic but what's the message right because in the fallen world today you know it could be something that the whole entire world r wants to rally behind but anyone with any you know biblical sen sense would be able to look at that and be like well that's not actually good right yeah yeah so yeah. but either way i mean yes the possibility could exist that there would be aliens or sophisticated beings on another planet but for me it's just not probable because it's like the distance to get here how would you do that how long would it take <clears throat> and it's yeah. certainly when it comes to ufo sightings and they have freaking landing lights and i'm like nah <laughs> yeah i no. just see, i see so much of this like ufo propaganda coming out now that it's just like the more it comes out the more i'm like here we go man it's like, fucking heavy right now too it is so heavy bro they're all i think is just they're about to hit us with the oh like you know we got to come together the one world order thing we have to destroy the enemy shoot a yeah. nuke at him you know yeah fight the bug dude <clears throat> yeah i've been i've been thinking about the uh the whole uh, space travel thing with uh, alien civilizations visiting earth how how long did it take for us to go from horse and carriage to you ready for this a rocket to the moon like 100 years right yeah and that's that's just 100 years of of innovation and i think and, like difference between world war one or even yeah. world war two and our stuff today it's like World War II, we saw the aircraft engine go from where we were getting the start of kind of like jet planes and stuff like that. Most of it mm -hmm. was still props. Um, but weaponry started getting more advanced and everything. Just after World War II, you know, in the next decade and a half over, we're shooting rockets. Mm -hmm. And now we have jets that can fly like 2000 miles an hour <laughs> you know right and freaking or we could shoot a freaking intercontinental ballistic missile that goes all that goes out of the atmosphere goes around the earth comes straight back down and could freaking knock out someone's house well they had, they had the that other in world side war of the earth, right they had that in world well, war yeah II. well the, the v2 rocket program and all that sort yeah. of stuff but it was just like you know a number of kilometers like 10 20 kilometers yeah, but so it's so it's just like so yeah, I mean the advancements in technology have gone through the roof. So honestly, but, they wouldn't even have to be that much more advanced to but kind of my, be out, my, out of my us. My point, my point is, is that if it took us a hundred years to go from horse and buggy to go into the moon, or even more than that, right? Uh, right. Sending drones to Mars. I mean, what what do you think a, a civilization would be able to do if they were thousands of years older than us? Yeah, but the thing is. It, well, are you talking about a civilization on another planet? Sure. Yeah. Well, that's not the problem. The problem is the distance and the expanding of the universe, right? So, right. I understand. I, I understand everything. Everything's expanding out from a, a singular point. Right. The Big so you Bang can be theory, as advanced right? as you want, but realistically, is if you're not traveling faster than light somehow, well, then you also you're never gonna that, that, oh. You also got to remember that there is theoretics of wormholes. <laughs> And if if a civilization can master that technology, master that science, master that mathematics that's needed in order to manipulate wormholes, that's a whole different story. Maybe. I don't know. To me, that's like a cheat code. Like when I think about that, and I don't like that too much. Like I, I try not to play games with cheat codes too much because it just ruins the game for me. <laughs> but it, like for real, you know, and like I get that that's like an actual thing and people think mm -hmm. about this well I, who knows it's theoretical but you know theoretically <clears throat> is an actual thing but i like to think of it more like if it's possible then in the expansion and the distances like it's more interesting for me to think about like maybe a civilization has to travel in a certain direction through the universe in order to get to certain things and can't go the other way so if, it, if we're all expanding there has to be like a certain trajectory of expansion if that makes sense like this object is moving away from this yeah one. so maybe they could travel to this Come closer object. to your mic friend 
they could travel to this object, but not back to the one they came from, if that makes sense. So it might be like a one-way trip for, for these civilizations. Well, they'd have to get a wormhole going back the other way. Well, yeah. I'm not even talking about wormholes. I'm talking oh. about outside of, worm, outside of Chico. So, oh, but here's another thing, too. Just because a civilization has been around for thousands of years doesn't mean that necessarily they're also advanced. No, like, no, think I... Of, I Think of like the United States. We we invented the internet, right, mm -hmm. and blue jeans and the business suit and things like that. But you get other s civilizations that have been around for thousands of years, and they still make their homes out of dirt, right? Or they still run around in the the jungle with bows and arrows, eating monkeys and stuff like that. So just because a civilization, even on our own planet, is thousands of years older than another one, doesn't mean that they're doing anything with it. Yeah, no, I mean, I I totally get that, right? But then you're mm -hmm. you're also saying that, uh, or you're assuming that we're just the smartest thing out there. Like oh, yeah. something like something that's more intelligent than us may only need five years to do the same innovations that we did in a hundred years, you know. And I and I know you have your your beliefs, right? But from my point of view, that there's got to be something else out there, and I don't believe that we're the smartest thing in the universe by a oh, long definitely shot not because there's god and everything else <clears throat> well <laughs> you know and and then you know like we're we're just getting into the sciences of antimatter or negative matter as they're calling it now right because positive and negatives everything equals out in this world right you have you have matter you have the dark duality matter, you have I'm all talking about uh, huh that's the duality i'm talking about right 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 but but now we're starting to find out that if we manipulate negative matter or, uh, or uh, fuck, I can't think of it. I just said it too. I'm going to call it negative matter. So if we can m manipulate negative matter, grab some. We don't know what it is. We don't know where it is. But due to the laws of physics, it has to exist somewhere, right? Everything has its opposite. Right. Uh, positive negatives equals zero, right? So mass if we were anti mass. Yeah, if if we were to be able to capture anti-mass and seclude it into a chamber and then put it next to another chamber that had uh, uh, regular mass or material, you would get this, this constant flow, this attraction between the two of them. And then if you have another one, like let's say we, we sandwich that negative mass with two positive masses. Now, as long as we're shooting electricity through these positive masses, we increase their gravitational pull via the flux lines of their magnetic waves. Right? So now that you have this any sense. So I know. <laughs> so now so now you have this negative mass going back and forth between the two of them with pretty much zero effort whatsoever except for initial startup the spark plug in your car and you have that motion of the negative mass going back and forth between the two positive masses that's free propulsion that's energy that's yeah but that's I, that's like an empty vacuum chamber and you freaking you suck all the air out of the vacuum chamber okay well you have nothing right there's nothing in there anti-mass i mean call it what you want there's nothing there we don't have, you can't then take that um, vacuum chamber and shake it up, and now you have an engine. Uh, it, it, I mean, you're, you're, <laughs> you're looking at it in a very vague sense, though. I mean, obviously, there has to be some technology built around it, right? We, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you shake it up, and now you have an engine. Oh, shoot, my vacuum chamber is flying off into the sky. <laughs> but, what I'm, but what I'm saying is that the power behind this stuff, if you just have, if you're able to restrict the 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 natural laws of attraction between positive and negative uh, materials or charges, you're able to create power that can pretty much bring you up to the speed of light. Now it may take time to accelerate that fast, and it's going to take time to break, you know, from from the speed of light. But it, it you can get pretty fast to this stuff, man. This is all stuff that they're working on right now. This is something that that they're doing at CERN. This is, I mean, obviously, you know, CERN's a bad word around here. But what do you got there? What is this? I can't even read it. It's too small. Inertial to reduction, or inertial mass reduction device. Now that sounds exactly like what I'm talking about right there. Bring her up. Look at this. This is a fucking patent for this shit. See? 
craft using an inertial mass reduction device comprises of an inner resonant cavity wall, outer resonant cavity, and a micro yep. and microwave emitters, the electrically yep. charged outer resonant cavity wall, and yep. the electrically insulated inner resonant cavity wall form a resonant yep. cavity. The microwave emitters create high frequency electromagnetic waves throughout the resonant cavity, causing the resonant cavity to vibrate in an accelerated mode and create a local polarized vacuum outside the outer resonant cavity wall. Yep. It's like, I read that. it's like I read that myself. It's I like didn't. these triangle spacecraft <laughs> that we keep seeing all over the place. Oh, Ooh. look, the Navy. The TR-3B. Department of the Navy. Adjusted of exploration. Course. Still going. Oh, 2036. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Yeah, man. This is shit that we're working on right now. Now, just imagine that there's this civilization out there that already has this shit figured out. They've mastered 2016. it. They applied for this in 2016 or filed in 2016 for this. Yeah. Well, then in that case, I would have to say that that one guy that was just on the Sean Ryan show podcast, that was kind of talking about all this sort of stuff. His Avi statement. Lope. Yeah. That his statement that he made where he's like, look at the way we treat other species on this planet. If they're in fear, in free, inferior to us, intelligence wise, we eat them. Now think of a civilization out there in the beyond that has is so much more intelligent than us, and we are in fear to them with our lacking intelligence. Are we just going to become cattle? They show up. Oh man, you know what? Fuck that. We're not going to do the Murfreesboro monster or Black Swan. We need to do um, uh, the fucking uh, the Fermi paradox. Why? That's what we need to do because that's what we're talking about right now. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Method and means for creating artificial gravity in spacecraft. 1972. 1969, excuse me. Wait, are we talking about uh, the the paradox thing in reference to this or in reference to me saying we're going to get eaten? That to to what you just said about us getting eaten. It's oh. it's in a, it's in a vague sense. In a, in a vague sense, it's not exactly what the Fermi paradox is. The Fermi paradox asks the questions, the question of if there's so many civilizations out there in the universe, why haven't we been visited? But there's a there's a longer version to it too, right? It goes along the lines of if you use the Drake equation. Do you know what the Drake equation is? It's I know who Drake is. It's it's a it's a uh, it's an equation used to predict the amount of intelligent civilizations there are in the universe, yeah. um, and you have to you have to find out these variables. You know, you have to find out the values of of these uh, inputs. Bring it up, Jeff. Jamie, bring well, it up. I think that bring up the Drake equation. Um, <clears throat> but I think that uh, look at this shit. Never mind. I lost it. Fucking force field generator. Yeah, man. Bro, they're building. I'm telling you, they got breakaway civil. They got fucking space cruisers and shit up there, man. They're doing it. They've been doing it, I think. I think they've been up there for like 50 years, probably, with like space destroyers. and. You Could know. you imagine getting one of them little... I don't even know what they're called, like floating jet skis that they have in Star Wars that they're zipping around in the the woods with. Getting one the of those speeders, things, yeah, yeah I, versus I'm like a motorcycle, like, that'd be dope, dude. I know Jeremy's never seen any of this shit, but you know, like any of these, like you know, Babylon Five, Star Trek, Star Wars, like any of these ideas where you have like these giant fleets of, yeah. you know. Klingons. Jake, Jake learned a new uh, a new term yesterday. Do you remember it, Jake? A new term? Yeah. Was it yesterday? Yeah. No, it was no. It was two days ago. Two days ago when you were over at my house, and I was I was working out in my little makeshift gym down here. Is and that where the term space is? Operas. Um... Space operas. Anyways, I told Jake I was like, um... I don't like space operas, and he's like, space operas are just people singing in space. No, space operas are just Star Wars and Star Trek, that kind of stuff. Dune. Which is weird because it's all aliens. You like aliens? Yeah, not that kind. Look, That's... in a, in the multiverse. I'm not a big epic guy. It's... I need science. Starship it, Troopers. There's no science in that shit. It's like two movies, but no one watches the second one. It's, it's, it's the same thing with like Marvel movies, man. I'm not, I'm not a fan of Marvel. 
because all it all all they do is they add like these bright explosions and they dangle some keys in front of you and they're like look be entertained by this but yet their their script writing fucking sucks uh, right there's nothing behind it they're terrible the people who Kenzer, write for them are terrible people kenzar says that those bikes are called speeders crystal says now he's discriminating against aliens yeah you're a, <laughs> you're a specious dude i guess i am yeah i guess i am it is what it dude, is. Check that, dude. I'm on a. I'm going down a rabbit hole now. Did you bring tab. up the Drake equation yet? No, I forgot. I'm sorry. I went down a rabbit hole. Look, dude. Walking through walls. Training system patent. This invention is a training system which enables a human being to acquire sufficient hyperspace energy in order to pull the body out of dimension so that the person can walk through solid ob- objects such as wooden doors. Hey, hey, Jeff. Jeff. Fuck yeah, dude. Jeff, when you what? present your one episode next year, why don't you just bring patents? All right. <laughs> that would actually be super easy. Dude, what is a good conversation? Oh, Sinclair, he's right here. John St. Clair. That's his fucking name. I was I was just going to ask, who's the guy's name that was like trying to run through walls and like part of the, uh, damn, I can't think of the damn fucking program now. One of those Stargate programs or whatever it was. He was trying to run through walls, man. That was him. You know what he needs to finish? He needs to finish freaking that gateway process thing yeah he does which is easy he was just reading it and then trying to explain it to these to to me because i'm dumb but yeah jeff jeff likes to leave things on finisher well you need to finish communion i didn't unfinish that you were like we got to do a different we got to start this other fucking series and then we just never went back to it that's not true no you said that you didn't want to do it anymore because you didn't like it we were already halfway through yeah, you said, well, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't like reading like this. I like going off script. You're making this shit up. No. That's what you said. And then the you're like, reader. oh, let me pull up I'm a bunch of patterns and read world, them to you. Man. I'm the greatest reader in the land. <laughs> Are you guys ready for some more Men in Black? Uh... No. I mean, we're like yeah, half this rate, through. At this rate, we might as well just say, screw it. We're going to do another episode on it and just keep arguing with each other about aliens. We're bad at this. Are we? Well, it's along the lines. Or are we good at it? Well, hold on. All right. Have you oh, even God. seen the movie Men in Black? Are you lying? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I know. I, I think I did. I think I did. I'm pretty sure I did when I was a kid. I don't, I don't remember it. I can't tell you what it was. I mean, there's I, a few I, movies I now. About, but... The other ones are pretty I, garbage. I don't think I saw more than one. Good. I'm pretty sure I did. I remember the, the flashy thingy. And then, yeah, yeah, it was probably one of those things where it was on, but I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. So it is what it is. Crystal, I can't kidnap him because I gave him a firearm (laughs) (laughs) and he would use it on me. I'd have to go all out. I couldn't just I couldn't just show up and be like, hey, man, let's hang out. I would have to put on a ski mask and and chloroform him and drag him out of this house, hitting his head on every step on the way out. And and stuffing them into a, a bag, you know why? I don't know. But throwing them in the back of the car and taking them over, and then like clockwork, oranging his eyes open and <laughs> forcing him to watch movies. Because you guys love I mean, me. I, can feel it. I just it, it's the ADD, you know. I just I have to go just all out at stuff. I can't just you know. You said you're gonna clock monkey orange around with it. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna make him watch all of these movies. Hell yeah! You guys ever <sighs> had Belvita crunchies, dude? No. Yes, oh, yeah, those, are awesome. those are delicious. Dude, yes, Belvita, Belvita, sponsor us, dude. Please. Look at the ingredients in that. It's probably terrible. I don't you. give a shit. They're delicious. Yeah, I like the blueberry ones. I also like the blueberry ones. They're really good. All right, I'm ready to continue. <laughs> uh, I was just going to look through and see if there was any ones that I actually wanted to, to like make sure we get out. Uh, Keats Island, British Columbia, January and May 1968. A woman who had moved to a remote cabin in October of 1967 began witnessing a plethora of strange lights in the sky almost immediately after moving. On January 29th, after witnessing a cigar-shaped craft with dimmed red and yellow lights, two quote-unquote employees of the local hydroelectric company dressed in all black uh, coverall stopped by her cabin. 
the men offered to help her install her stovepipe and completed the task and had a glass of tea with her before they left. She admits that they were strange. Their skin was a dark olive color and they had issues with walking. They always looked at their feet while they were walking about, and even though they were watching their feet, they still found it hard to walk straight. On May 2nd, she once again encountered two strange dark olive-colored men in all black. One of them was one of the men who stopped by and helped her install her stovepipe. The other was much younger. She guesstimated at 19 to 20 years old. This time, they were on a path on her property that she was walking on and moved to the side of the walkway for her to pass. She reports that she felt strange as the pair sat there and stared at her for a while while she passed, but they had claimed to yet again be there to inspect water and electric lines for the company. The very next day, a jeep full of four workers in normal blue working clothes and acting perfectly normal showed up to her house from the hydroelectric company claiming to be there to inspect her lines. When she told them that there were already two guys here the day prior, the supervisor of the crew told her that whoever they were, they weren't from the hydroelectric company. Albany, New York, February 1968. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, Jeffrey. You just made me think of something. I figured it out. Oh, you thought? Let's do it. Yeah, I figured it out. Think about this, right? You know how like AI deep fake videos, like it's hard for them to get certain things right. Like the hands are always weird. The faces and crowds are always weird. Like humans walking is kind of weird. Can't quite get it. It's like that uncanny valley shit. Yeah. I wonder if implanted memories are the same way. Or at least Probably. if implanted memories back then were the same way. Maybe. The so uncanny my, valley is interesting. My my thought is basically like, what if the men in black aren't actually there? They're just implanted memories in a way, kind of like, like screen memories where you're talking about. Yep. Where like, instead of remembering the actual mm -hmm. event with the entities, you remember the owls or whatever the, the thing was. What if the men in black is just another version of that? And it just can't quite get that uncanny valley thing down because it's not human. So it doesn't understand fully how to represent a human in these false memories that is an extremely interesting point of view on this i like that a lot actually because uh you know when we were talking about the screen memories and and the owls and how they were imperfect right some owls would be wearing these boot-like things or they would have a human-like face or a human-like appendage or some sort of bipedal appendage on them uh the screen the screen memory theory tells you that you know uh they they can't master their craft they're not mastered at it yet it's they're not you know, perfect. And if you apply that to the uh, men in black story and theories, then it makes a lot of sense. It really does. And I mean, in that case, you could be dealing with one or two things, right? Most likely you're dealing with either a, uh, an extraterrestrial being, whether it be from outer space or, or a different dimension, or you're dealing with the government. Interesting. I like it. I like that. Brought to you by... By reading. Yes. Velveeta Crunchy. <laughs> they have to you're gonna know. A, you're going to get a sued. All right, you guys ready to move on? Albany, New York, February 1968. An avid UFO investigator named Jennifer Stevens reported a strange incident. Her husband had stopped into the local coffee shop during work hours where a man struck up a conversation with him. The man was strange and had a darker olive complexion. But what was really strange was that the man talked only about UFOs. Peter, Jennifer's husband, didn't really know what to make of it. Jennifer was the sky watcher, not him. The man would abruptly stop, stand up, and say one last thing. Quote, people who look for UFOs would be very, very careful. Jennifer would get in contact with John Keel about the incident, and when Keel asked Peter to draw the person he saw, Peter drew two of them. One they sent to Keel, and the other they kept for themselves. A few weeks later, their house was broken into during the night. The only thing that they could find missing was the sketch that Peter drew of a strange man. Two months later, Peter died of unknown circumstances. Jennifer was convinced that it was tied to the strange man and her UFO research. So she immediately stopped everything and anything to do with the subject of UFOs. John Keel would go on to use Peter's drawing whenever someone would report a run-in with a member or members of the Men in Black, which was typically met 
with confirmation that it was the man that they had also encountered. Arcadia, Florida, 1972. Author Timothy Beckley mentions in his book, Curse of the Men in Black, the story of former FBI employee Patricia Hyde, where in 1972 she witnessed a strange object in the sky over Arcadia, Florida. This, of course, sent her down the UFO rabbit hole, as it does with so many others. Shortly after, she would be approached by a man with sharp and thin eyes dressed in an all-black suit. The man sternly told her, quote, you will stop investigating flying saucers. Decatur, Illinois, early 1970s. Cryptozoologist and owner of the International Cryptozoology Museum in Portland, Maine, Lauren Coleman, had his own encounter with a strange man in black, which he outlines in his book, Mysterious America. In the section of the book that outlines his research into the Mad Gasser of Mattoon from the 1930s, Lauren described his experience with a Lieutenant Applegate at his then home in, El Dorado, in the El Dorado apartments, quote, a darkly suited, very thin man who said he was with the Decatur Police Department stepped into my life. He identified himself as Detective Lieutenant Applegate. He said he was checking to see if I was the en enema, ba the enema bandit and why I was digging into this story. He said I should stop researching this series of cases. A few days after the encounter with the strange man, Coleman attempted to contact him by way of the Decatur Police Department when he was shocked to discover that nobody matching the name of Applegate or the man's phys physical description ever worked in the department. I'll do one more. Mexico City, Mexico, 1975. On May 3rd, 1975, Carlos Antonio de los Santos Montiel was flying his private Piper Aztec 24 airplane when shortly after taking off from Mexico City, he was surrounded by three flying saucer-like craft. The saucers shadowed him for a while until he randomly was lifted from 15,000 feet to 15,800 feet in elevation without his control. Immediate ap immediately after, the saucers flew away at incredible speeds and Carlos was left alone the rest of his flight. Several weeks after this encounter, he was driving to a local news station to be interviewed about the event when a car forced him to pull over on the side of the road. A strange man dressed in all black approached Montiel and sternly stated that I would be unwise to appear on the show. Montiel was so shaken up from the encounter with the man that he did not appear on the show and remained very hesitant to speak about either encounter ever again. All right, let's talk about it. Hefe, you got to come back. There he is. My bad. Yeah. Rick Bear, what's up, bro? First time chatter. How you doing, bud? How you doing, Bear. Rick? What's up, Rick? Hey, if, if you're in the chat and you're not... uh following the infinite rabbit hole make sure you hit that follow, follow yeah, button. hit the follow button for us rick appreciate you all right so what do you guys what think we talking about uh oh, talking yeah. about men in black we've yeah, been yeah, doing yeah. it for three days now yeah i mean <laughs> no we had an interview last time oh we did didn't we you're right yeah you're right. yeah uh well uh skeeter says that we did a cover where bufon started because it's from barron wisconsin and it's not far from us for those that are unfamiliar with MUFON, there's probably not a lot of you, but I'm sure there's one or two listening to the Infinite Rabbit Hole right now that are not familiar with MUFON. That is the Mutual UFO Network and is one of the absolute biggest networks or organizations in the study of ufology. Yeah, man. Look, I mean, I don't know. I think I've pretty much exhausted my thoughts on what the men in black are, could be, right? There's a million theories. The one that I just came up with a few minutes ago is probably my favorite so far, right? The, just the, mm -hmm. the janky, f cheap, fake screen memory men in black. And then, the, of course, there's obviously like actual what we you, you could call them the men in black, right? Like three letter agencies will come knock on your door if you see some shit that's classified or, you know, whatever the case is. Uh, so both. Yeah, Both. I'll do uh, I'll do one more. I have a couple other sightings and encounters, but I'll do one more just because uh, it's from Idaho, and we know somebody <laughs> from Idaho. So who do, who do we know from Idaho? Uh, her name's Whitney. 
Also, oh, my wife. Rowan. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, She's from Idaho. <laughs> so we'll we'll knock out this Idaho one, and uh, there's plenty of content to do multiple Men in Black episodes. So maybe somewhere down the road we'll uh, revisit, and I'll I'll tack on the other encounters that I did not cover. We're already an hour and a half into this recording, so we've got to start wrapping her up. So, you guys ready? Good story. Yep. North Idaho, mid 1970s. A doctor mentioned in Nick Redfern's book, The Real Men in Black, who wanted to remain anonymous, tells a story when he was asked to look at an abrasion on a young boy's arm. When the doctor asked the boy how he had gotten the injury, the boy told of how it was, quote, the space doctors who had given it to him. The boy elaborated and described how he watched a strange airplane land in the woods behind his house. He was curious and entered the woods to get a better look. There he came across strange-looking people who captured him and brought him to another craft and what would later be described as conducting medical and intelligence tests on the boy. The boy didn't really put much weight into what the young... I'm sorry. The doctor didn't really put much weight into what the young boy was telling him as he believed it was just a case of the boy's imagination. But five years later, Two men dressed in all black with black hats and black sunglasses showed up at his door asking about the boy's story. The unnamed doctor asked the two men why they wanted to know information on the boy, in which the one in front, who did all of the talking, claimed that they were just simply curious. The doctor relayed a very vague uh, relayed very vague details of the boy, but nothing about the strange things he claimed. The men in black seemed to accept the answer as a stiff smile arose on the one on the one's face and they left in haste. So other than that, I do have stories from Orchard Beach, Maine um, and another one from West London, England. Uh, but I think that we got the really good ones out of there, at least today. Have you thought about making like a page on the website where you just drop like all these, like a, maybe like a blog of sorts? Ooh, <laughs> like a, like on the Patreon? I could do that. You could do that on Patreon. Yeah, that's a good idea. Hmm. You could definitely do it. Um, yeah. So, final thoughts. I don't know if... Did we do final thoughts on the last uh, Men in Black episode? I don't think we did. I don't Mm-mm. think so. Let's do it now. Uh, Hefe, are you... Uh, are, are you sticking with... What, what do you think the origins are, of them are? Even if they're screen memories, what are they? Well, I think if it's you're probably... in the chat, by the way, go ahead and sound off of what you think they are. We'll uh, we'll read them off here. Go ahead. Jeff, what do sorry. I think the men? In... What do I... what was the question? Ask me the question one more time, man. I'm sorry. So you had you had come out with the explanation that you believe that the men in black could be um, screen memories, right? What are they screen memories of? What are they hiding? Anything really? I mean. It, this could just be an advanced thing that <clears throat> governments and corporations are doing, uh, just like on a lower level, like I said earlier, right? Like if if you somehow stumble into like a classified building somewhere, right? And you see some shit you're not supposed to see. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're not necessarily going to disappear, right? Like they're going to send some dudes in suits to come talk to you and they're probably going to have you sign some paperwork and like, you know, never happened type of thing, right? So, and that's been happening forever. So maybe whatever is happening, even if it is like other entities, whether from in in the earth or outside the earth coming here, you know, maybe they've seen that and they're like, okay, let's try to mimic this with these screen memories, right? If we're going to come in here and fuck around, like, let's try to implant something that maybe they'll recognize. And which is why I was saying maybe they have trouble mastering the human thing, right? Whatever Mm -hmm. it is. So they're, when they're, implanting those screen memories of the men in black in your mind something's off right the skin tone's a little off the way they Mm -hmm. walk is weird the way they sound when they talk is weird because it's not humans creating those screen memories they're creating screen memories of the thing that humans do which is send the fbi or the cia knocking at your door like it what they're covering up who knows right i mean i couldn't even begin to speculate on what aliens or interdimensionals would want with us or want to do here i have no idea that they, they want to milk our nipples 100 percent. unless it's something like that jeff we're getting milked my favorite theory about that not to get too sidetracked is just like that we're somehow either an experiment or they seeded us here or they were here at some point in the past and now they're 
or they've always been here or they're coming back to see what has happened in the last million years. Like those types of things are my favorite things to think stuff. Yakub. I don't think about any of that stuff ever. Good. Even when Jeff brings it up, I still don't think about it. So what do you think of the men in black, sir? I mean, I'd be willing to put some weight into it and say that they're, that it's legit. Um, not that there are any sort of special like robots or whatever. Like Skeeter says, uh, Skeeter said, I'm still undecided if men in black are humanoids, human experimented on different dimensional beings, people from the future, sky- psychic visions or other. Um, I think that it's just a branch of the government. It could be the CIA or the FBI. Because mm-hmm. um, like we discussed last time, two weeks ago when we were talking about this, was that there's nothing more clean cut and also gives the sense of an authority figure than a plain black suit with a white shirt, black sunglasses, hat, no hat, whatever, but a clean cut look, all that sort of stuff. Um, and generally speaking, a lot of uh, military agencies use that exact same thing as their sort of uniform or attire, right? Yep. Uh you know, and that would make sense if, as in in the be- beginning of all this crap, they're super like not um, okay with everyone kind of assuming everything's all aliens and UFOs. It would be interesting if there was a way to see the a n- number of sightings or reports of the Men in Black, and how, depending on the culture and what was going on, whether there was an increase of that. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Skeeter. Whether there was an increase of that um, activity or a decrease, like everyone's talking about UFOs now, they seem to be wanting to blame everything on the aliens. So I would imagine there'd be a decrease of people having interactions with the men in black or whatever the alphabet soup agency actually is, what it stands for, whatever it is, versus like in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, where it was, you know, way more like we're doing these advancements in technology. We don't want people talking about it, you know, that sort of a thing. We don't want people to investigate it and then find out what's actually going on. Um, but now they're willing to just be like, yeah, you know, the aliens or whatever. Um, it's probably a, a real group that they're just, you know, they're probably really hostile back in the day and maybe not so much now or when people start kind of getting close to everything. Like, I mean, some of these folks... They're sitting there saying, like, you know, they had a conversation with someone or they had an experience, but, you know, they didn't say anything. And then the men in black are showing up telling them to stop, to, you know, not to say anything about it. Right. And we know today that our phones hear everything we say, you know, our webcams can record us even when they're not on or the, the light isn't on, that sort of stuff. You know, how long has that technology been around? Yeah. Where people are just being constantly watched and monitored all the freaking time. And I get it. You know, you get back into like the fifties and sixties and it's like, yeah, well, you know, you got a, a rotary phone on the wall type stuff, but that's not to say that that, you know, high level technology, the stuff that may or may not have gotten us to the moon wasn't already around and they didn't have, you know, tabs on people on incidents and things like that. And especially if it was, you know, military or, you know, black budget, you know, um, experiments going on in a, in a population, they would have tabs on everybody, you know? So maybe mm-hmm. it was like, we flew this craft over this house. We're going to go to every single, every single house in this neighborhood and tell them, don't say anything about what you just saw or we'll get you or whatever it is. And maybe they come up to some of the neighbors and be like 9 PM on a Friday, dude, I was asleep you know, (laughs) type stuff. (laughs) And maybe they come up on some of the neighbors in in the neighborhood that are just like, how would they know that? You know, I didn't tell anyone that I saw that craft because they canvassed the entire area and they run away because they got to get to a hundred houses in this, in this block. Right. Yep. So it's like, it could be that, you know, but I'm leaning more into the belief that, yeah, it's, it's a real organization with real people but with their motive, who knows? Besides, it seems to shut people up. And if they don't shut up, then they disappear. 
hmm. or they die, right? My uh, the house broken into. My my personal opinion on the Men in Black. I think my personal opinion with the Men in Black goes hand in hand with the explanation of UFOs that I discussed in the last recording of the Men in Black, where the uh, they're potential time travelers. I mean, and that's kind of a, a, a fantasy answer for you too. Um, it's it's what I want them to be. To be honest with you, I think that'd be a really really cool concept. Jake's probably right though. They're probably just government entities, something from the Alphabet Bit Soup Boys. But I in in the in the land of uh, my wants, needs, and desires, I would like them to be from <laughs> from time and be time travelers, the the guardians of time. That they fly around in their little flying saucers and and uh, stop people from ruining the timeline so that we can all have babies and stuff. My only problem with that is that we see them and we talk about them. And just by that, I mean, we are talking about them right now. So we are going down the Tulpa line. I get, I don't know what that is, but we're fucking with the timeline, right? Like that Uh alone is fucking with the timeline. Unless, unless this is how the timeline's supposed to be. So you got to remember we're, we're close. We're close. We're close to the disclosure. It's coming. Right. Right. No, I don't believe so. You don't think so? I think no, I think it's all. coming. I think it's coming. No. I, I think do. what's coming. I think what's coming is a is a a disclosure, but not the disclosure. I think mm, what's coming is a fair a disclosure of a bunch of lies. Yeah, fake disclosure is coming. Where every fair. single question that has a little bit of little bit of snazzy stuff or a cool answer is like, oh, we'll talk about that in the closed session. Yeah, it's all going to be closed sessions. It's all going to be unknowns. It's all going to be potential threat to national security or global security. Mm-hmm. It's going to be, yeah, you're going to get the fucking bullshit answer, bro. They're not going to ever tell us, you know, the only way that you're ever going to find out that like actual aliens exist is if like they show up in mass and just make themselves known. And even then, well, it's questionable, right? When you talk so, about all these conspiracies with 5G towers and hologram technology and all this type of shit. And, and uh, you know, voice-to-skull technology, which could be, like, video-to-skull technology. Think about that, right? Like, Right. Well, let's, let's take a quick dive down the, uh, uh, the, the news aisle of the infinite rabbit hole real quick. Because there's two big, big news... Uh, uh, or two pieces of news out there that are huge. Uh, one is that, it, you know, this, this could be under the funny years disclosure that you were talking about, right? Um, where the James Webb telescope has picked up on something that seemed to have taken a uh, 90 degree turn directly towards Earth. Um, yeah. And is that real? Saying, yeah. That's, uh, well, Did apparently, yeah. That, but I wasn't, I wasn't sure if that was just some bullshit tiktok video you know no 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 i i i saw that on uh scientific weekly i believe it was so you know that's the thing that's what i'm talking about right yeah. like and this is the type of thing where there's certain threats that none of us can really like prove we can't substantiate <laughs> this at all so it's just like you have to trust well if they come out tomorrow and they're like hey man that thing that turned is coming towards us like it'll be here in 10 years and it's a threat um i guess you're telling me the truth yeah mm. i think it's interesting though um oh actually you know what there's yeah the, the one one other news piece of news one other news is we've got some news is here guys uh the other news is is that we have a uh, very famous event that's making its way back into the news is the miami mall thing it's coming oh, yeah. back oh yeah Oh yeah, apparently, apparently, some guy I don't I I don't remember his name, but apparently, uh, they said they called his name by name in Congress and announced him as an enemy of the state. And this guy had gone online and announced that he has video footage of the beings that were in that mall, and that he will release them. He just needs to find the right way to do it so that he doesn't get fucking killed. Just put it on X right now. You you don't think they can find you when you post something on X? No, I don't think that they'd care at that point to kill him. I think they would squash yeah, that shit one, right number, away. 
No, because the thing is, if this is like the type of thing that like Dr. Greer always talks about, right? What love them or hate them. Mm-hmm. You know, there has to be a protocol in order to come out with certain type of shit so you don't mm-hmm. get killed. And the people who try to come out like secretively or like behind closed doors and through some chant, like that shit doesn't work, bro. Like you have to put that shit out open source. Yeah. Like everybody has to know. No, he's he's got to go to fucking Joe Rogan. He needs to go somewhere. Or Joe Rogan or whatever. Yeah. Something. He needs to go live somewhere big yeah. and just put it That's out there put it on x you put it on yeah. x and it'll get shared by 20 million people on x coming. man i don't think who you're is safe that, who, he's really famous but he's the the ufo guy and all those guys that went on the sean ryan show podcast and they were talking about all that crazy stuff and they were all the whistleblowers and they're going through this one guy in order to get the their stuff out there in congress yeah or are you talking about dr stephen greer no, I think he's, he's talking about Greer. Bob Lazar. Not Bob Lazar. I'm not talking about him. No? I'm talking about, it's like, oh my gosh. He's some like, Dave Rush? he's on Rogan. He's been on Sean Ryan. He's like some freaking researcher. And he helps people come out with this sort of stuff. Stephen Greer. No. Stephen Greer does it. Well, I mean. Dr. Stephen two Greer. People. That's his whole spiel. His whole steel, spiel is that he gets these whistleblowers and these people who apparently are in the know or were in the know at some point and he gets yeah. them together. And every so often they have these meetings in front of Congress or and he's put out information, you know, like, uh, I think it's G R I E R or is it E E R? I think it's G R E E R. No, I'm looking at him, not him. Okay. All right. While, while you're doing that, let's go ahead and read through some of the comments here. Skeeter says, I'm still undecided if MIB are humanoids. Oh wait, you already said this, didn't you Jake? Yeah. Okay. Um, where where did you leave off? Did we get everybody? They're all arguing with each other about what the men in black are, looks like. Oh. Kenzo says, well, they have to tell us the truth, right? So maybe it is exactly like they showed in the movies. Uh, maybe they're just here to keep it George all hush-hush. Oh, George Knapp. And coast Je- to coast AM. Jeremy uh, Corbell? Yeah, Jeremy Corbell. Yeah. Jeremy Corbell is uh, he's a big, big-time whistleblower. Uh, George Knapp is he he he's from the the coast to coast AM family? But he, does Knapp. he help whistleblowers come out? Um, yes and no. I uh, I would say that there's been whistleblowers on uh, coast to coast, but I, I it's mostly for entertainment. I don't know how how serious you would be taken if you went on coast to coast and tried to blow a whistle. I don't. I don't think you'd be taking that seriously. Yeah, they got some. There's some weirdos that go on there. Sometimes. Well, then yeah. maybe it, it's Greer. Yeah, I think was one of the authors in that Skinwalker Ranch book. Could be wrong. Um, let's see. But yeah, he's gonna have to. This individual would have. To, I agree. Throwing it up on Rogan. So, like, literally at that point. 30 million people see it all at the same time. And now there's no point in killing the guy because it's just going to go massive, massively viral from there. You have to come out loud and live so that that you can get ahead of the alphabet soup boys. And, uh, that's the problem. The thing, the fact, if, if it's true that they like named this man, like an enemy of the state and he's just like a regular dude who would have just happened to have been in the mall and like, like he's not like a trained operative of any kind. Like they already mm-hmm. got him, bro. Let's be realistic. Oh yeah, like no, they, kn- they know fucked. exactly where he is. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, and, and explode, and they probably <laughs> don't even have to get him. Right? He again, he's not a trained operative. They probably scrubbed his device remotely. Instantly. Yeah, probably. As soon as they knew that he had it, they were like, "Oh, just fucking, oh, it's gone. Don't worry." And about that's it. probably why we haven't seen it yet. Or they put a little CP on his device or something like that, and he's going to go to prison for that or some shit. Yeah. Well, oh yeah. Well, those uh, those two big newses are are making news. You know, you got the the thing that's coming to Earth could be here, and I don't know. I think it's like ten light years away or something like that. So I it's, it's, it's ten old, years, old, yeah. Ten light. I think it's ten light years, man. So you're looking at hundreds, if not thousands, of years still. It depends on, on how fast it goes. it's moving, right? And I I don't think we're catching it on the James Webb telescope if it's moving at light speed. We have uh. Uh, somebody there was another comment I want to read off well that's the thing too right if it's 10 light years away and we just noticed it turning recently that means it turned 10 years ago that's true yeah it did that's true so 
I we, we need to cover the Fermi paradox. It it would be a fucking awesome conversation. I'm 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 gonna dive into the Fermi paradox next. You guys are gonna love that. Um, Rick Bear four five nine says we don't even get the truth from elected officials. I saw that you pinned that, so I wanted to get that out. Very true. Very very true. All right. What do you think, guys? Ready to call it? It's bedtime, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I think that was a good episode. Good job, we didn't Jerry. really talk about the Men in Black, but you know, whatever. It is what it is. I mean, what's there to talk about? No one we knows. We got one on the, the show talking to us, bro. What are you talking about? Yeah, we got a Blues Brother right here. Right here, man. Yeah. It's not my fault that the Blues Brothers were created in order to make the Men in Black look like jokes. Yeah. yeah. New conspiracy unlocked. Yep. Yeah. The Blues Brothers, the original Men in Black. All right. Well, that has been another episode of the Infinite Rabbit Hole podcast. Uh, just a reminder that if you want to help support the Infinite Rabbit Hole podcast, head on over to patreon.com forward slash infinite rabbit hole. I have a Patreon exclusive episode in the works, uh, an additional piece to go along with the Skinwalker Ranch episodes. Um, I still don't know in what format I'm going to put it on. I'll put a survey up on the Facebook here probably probably tomorrow. So keep keep your eyes out. Uh, tomorrow being October 21st, not the tomorrow that you're probably listening to this on Spotify because that's a week from now. Um, so keep keep your eyes out and uh, let me know what kind of format you would like for for Patreon. And um, yeah. Thank you again, Kenzar, as our first patron. I do appreciate that. You're awesome. Thank you, Kenzar. And uh, for those that are still listening, twitch.tv forward slash infinite rabbit hole every Sunday at 8 p.m. Central Time. You can come watch the infinite rabbit hole record live and be part of the chat. Until next time, travelers. We'll see you right here in the next fork in the path of the infinite rabbit hole. Bye, everybody. Bye. Leave a voicemail on the website. Oh, yeah, leave a voicemail. Go to the website, infiniterabbithole.com. There is a red button in the bottom right for you to leave a voicemail for us. Say something like, hey, this is so-and-so from so-and-so's uh, company or podcast, or I'm just so-and-so. Uh, you're listening to the Infinite Rabbit Hole. Simple as that. We'll throw it out there. You got, you got a business that you want to advertise? This is the way you do it for free. We got you. Shoot, you want to sell something on Offer Up? Yeah. Throw it in the voicemail and we'll throw it out there. Fuck it. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll talk to you all later. Goodbye. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Infinite Rabbit Hole podcast. If you're looking for more of our stuff, head on over to infiniterabbithole.com where you can find links to all the podcast players that we are available on and even our video platforms such as TikTok and YouTube. While you're there, make sure to check out all the links for our socials and hit that follow so you know when all the new stuff from our podcast comes out. And until next time, travelers, we'll see you right here in the next fork in the path of the infinite rabbit hole. Bye.